Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, weekend update show. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, uh, welcome aboard. Thank you very much for spending some time with us. Like, subscribe, uh, share with your friends uh, in the continuous movement of technical analysis and unbiased uh, approach to uh, looking at the markets. Uh, before we even get started about last week, uh, I want to be the first one, well, very one of the first people. Uh, it's early in the morning, so hopefully I'll be one of the first to wish all the fantastic moms, the great moms, uh, the moms who are the pillars of the homes, the matriarchs of the homes, uh, that hold it down. They're the glue that everything that we love and, and treasure and uh, respect and run through walls from a very happy and healthy uh, Mother's Day. Uh, every single day should be uh, cherished and, um, you know, and appreciated. But this is officially your day. So happy Mother's Day, uh, all moms out there, for you trading moms out there and all you non-trading moms out there. Hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. So God bless uh, there. So let's talk about the tape. Um, a lot of, lot of stuff, right? You had um, a lot of readings last week. Well, it feels like we always have a lot of readings last week. Uh, both the CPI and PPI showed uh, a slowdown, right? At least a slowdown in inflation. Um, you know, rates coming down a little bit, especially from the, the previous year. Uh, CPI finally cracked uh, the 5% area. We're down to 4.9%, earth shattering. Um, a lot of earnings continue to filter through. Uh, concerns continue to be surrounded. The banks and the failure of banks and their ability to stay solvent. And now, if that wasn't all, uh, now we've been two weeks talking about the debt seal. Now, before everybody goes crazy about the debt ceiling years ago when i first heard about the debt ceiling the way they were making it sound that the whole credit market right the whole credit market was going to freeze uh, everything was going to be horrible and uh, the world is going to end so far in the 24 years that i've been trading they they've wrote the ce the debt ceiling has been uh, has been rising every single time we come to this kind of fork in the road and at the end of the day it gets solved so the idea that we're talking about this for 24 years but they always raise the debt ceiling so far they haven't done it is it possible they finally don't do it the government shuts down and you won't be able to buy stamps maybe right oh is what was me how's our life going to change you're not going to get mail okay right what's me what's honestly what's the big deal and i know it's a big deal out there i'm being i'm being sarcastic but the point is again guys don't overthink or don't dwell uh, this has been a conversation that's been going on for 24 years. So far, they've they've never, uh, the, the government hasn't closed down for more than like a week. So it's really not that uh, big of a deal. But with all this stuff going on, and by the way, we're in the till uh, last kind of inning, uh, last couple of innings and in earnings. Uh, with all this, you have a lot of volatility, right? All a lot of volatility uh, throughout the, you know, throughout the day. Uh, there's definitely stocks that are breaking out and looking great. There's definitely an argument that five stocks are keen but giving up the market but at the end of the day we are still at highs we're still at 2023 highs uh one you know nearly uh 0.4 percent uh rise in the nasdaq this week the dow was down one percent and the spx uh fell about three tenths of a percent so the scoreboard really doesn't tell you and really doesn't show you the aggressive nature of the intraday moves but it's been like that now for for a very very long time and if you are an active trader uh, especially in the intraday cycles, you kind of know what we've been seeing now for uh, weeks now, okay? We've been seeing a uh, weakness at the open for about two, three hours, and then all of a sudden, there's like a rocket ship that's ignited, and next thing you know, we're just absolutely exploding uh, green at some point in the day. And when you when you see that type of volatility, and then in the midst of that, out of nowhere, even if the market is rising, then they pull the cues down a dollar and a half just because, right? Just because it's like 1.37 in, in, in the afternoon, uh, it, it really is a volatile, aggressive market. And when you're trading such an aggressive market, you have to approach it uh, in that matter until, you know, until kind of the dynamics of this market changes. Usually uh, in a normal organic market, you probably have three, four hours in the morning uh, to capture a trend, make sure your research confirms from the night before. Uh, this is a market that yes, absolutely all that is true, but you have to take your money a little bit faster than normal because if you don't take your money, the reversals are just just 
exaggerated to the point that it becomes scary. And we've seen so many stocks look like they're about to fall off a cliff, uh, breaking down technically. And the next thing you know, if you don't take your money, they reverse course and close green in a day and vice versa. We've seen stocks, uh, you know, showing a lot of strength, earnings, this, that, the other thing. You look an hour later, you know, they're down three, four percent. So it's a violent market. Uh, it's a proactive market. You have to kind of know uh, what kind of sentiment you have and what kind of market you sh structure you have going into the next day, because it's not just as simple as a setup, right? There's a lot of really good setups and that setup could be really, really strong. But at the end of the day, when you turn around you say, well, wait a minute, I don't understand. The stock was so is going in my direction. How could it be against me now? Again, that's the whole point. Welcome to this market. And this is kind of where, where you have to adjust or die. You can't just sit there and complain you know, once, twice, they'll trick you the third time. How many times can you get punched in the face without actually moving? You have to continuously be proactive, take your money, especially if you're a bre if you're a break even trader, excuse me, if you're a brand new trader, uh, or just somebody that's accumulating, accumulating, trying to build up your account, just use that break even, right? Use that break even. Once a stock goes into your direction and you take uh, cash flow, and this is something we've been harping on for years in the webinar. You know, once you get, you know, especially if you're a new trader building up your account, you know, your reserves are everything in this business. That's, that's your lifeline. It's kind of the more money you have, the, you know, the, the, the higher probability you're going to finally get to that aha moment before you expire. The smaller your account, unfortunately, you don't have that luxury. So when you're in the phase of building, 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 especially in a market like this, keep taking your money, right? Keep taking your money, 50 cents, a dollar, right? Take some money, uh, obviously keep a runner, use break even as you stop, but that's it. That is your max pain. And the point is, if you are continuously doing so, um, you know, it's very, very tough to kind of break those, you know, break those good habits. If you don't, right, if you kind of let's see, well, let's see what the market has to, to in store later, you're probably going to be upside down a lot of your positions because that type of market is not there right now. This is the type of market that's so aggressive that, again, like I said, if you don't take your money, they're going to take it uh, right back. So indexes, again, I apologize, I'm getting all these... Uh, I'm getting all these defenders that are supposedly uh, helping to protect my computer. They're annoying as hell as when you're, you're trying to record something live. But again, let this be my worst problem in the world. So going into this week, I, again, I'm, I'm looking at exactly the same type of market, okay? Uh, where you have to definitely be uh, prepared on both sides of the market. There's a lot of stocks, and you, we've been talking about them, that are breaking out in technology, right? Uh, Amazon had a really, really strong breakout this week, really strong above this 106 level. Uh, cracked the 111 level, uh, got above the one, well, didn't get above. This is the last one left, this 114 level, and now it's kind of consolidating. Uh, Google had a really, really strong week. Again, we've been talking about the option flow, uh, both Google and Amazon all week before they started breaking out. You know, Google had a monster, monster breakout from this whole range going back to February the 7th. I mean, this is a monster, monster move. Uh, you have stocks that are breaking down as well. You have names. Uh, that had uh, crappy earnings that are just sitting there and starting to wait for the next leg down. I mean, look at Tulo, right? And these are names I definitely like going into uh, this week. But like, look at a chart on Tulo, right? The longer it goes sideways, once it finally confirms the bottom range, it's going to implode. Uh, look at Qualcomm, right? Again, here's a perfect, another perfect example. Stock broke down, right? Broke down on Friday and kind of came right back up. Again, I still think the stock goes lower, but you know, these are the setups that look really, really good. Let me just give you guys a couple of names kind of from both sides uh, that I you know that I, that I do think could be uh, pretty, pretty good uh, going into this week. Uh, let, me get, let me look at my notes here. Yeah, look at Air, uh, look at Airbnb. Congratulations for all you guys uh, who caught Airbnb. And another perfect example of stocks breaking down. Look at Airbnb. It took down this whole channel going back to February and just got absolutely taken apart uh, on uh, on Friday. So you're going to have value on both sides of the market. The key is be prepared, right? Be prepared. This is not a you know this is not a trending market that you know it, it could give you the luxury of a five seven day move. This market sometimes will give you a you know a 30, 40 cent trend, a 30, 40 uh, minute trend, and then reverse just out of nowhere. Just look at Apple, perfect example, right? Apple had this magnificent magnificent run, and you know it, it, it's what it's kind of unfortunate that the stock you know is a week and a half, two weeks into consolidation hasn't broken uh, broken up yet. And now you could clearly see the top of the channel here where the stock needs to confirm. And now you have the bottom of the range here. Again, be prepared for both sides of the market. You know, look at a name, and I'll give you, give you some upside names as well. Look at IMGN, right? Look at IMGN. Look how good this consolidation is. This is a consolidation of literally a week. It's still going sideways. Eventually, if this thing starts taking out the top of the channel, 
you're going to get a massive move. Uh, look at a name like HLIT, right? HLIT had this really, really aggressive move up, right? And now it's consolidating, or, you know, as, as it, they say it, it's flagging, right? It's flagging. Eventually, this thing's going to get above this flag, get above this uh, uh, upper Bollinger Band, and this thing's going to scream as well. Uh, look at a name like LegalZoom, by the way, right? Same thing. You have a lot of stocks that gap up. It's kind of, I think it's called a floating island. Is that what it's called? I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, the point is it, it's gapping up, it's going sideways, and eventually this thing's going to look to test the top of the range. So if you are, you know, if you are trading both sides of the market uh, and you put yourself in a situation that you say to yourself, hey, I know the market's crazy right now. I have to take my cash flow a little bit faster. Uh, that is going to be the narrative until it shows me that a range could extend or a trend could extend for more than 30 minutes, right? Uh, if that's the case, I, I have to continuously take uh, money off the table and use break even as my stop because that is what the market uh, is giving us. One name that is uh, very, very interesting, right? So let's talk about Tesla for a second. So if 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 somebody looks just looks at the chart, you're not going to really get a lot of you're not going to really get a lot of uh, sense of what's going on. You staring around and say, ah, the stock has been in a dead downtrend, and it has been. If you look at the weekly chart, uh, if you look at the weekly chart of uh, you know Tesla ever since. Uh, it put in its high of uh, 313 in September. It's just been a mess. So nobody's going to really look at the chart right now and say, uh, this looks great. But a couple of event, a couple of things happened, okay? A couple of things happened uh, this week uh, that were very, very important. Number one, stock first got above this 166 level and started going higher, okay? Uh, Elon Musk then tweeted out that he hired a new CEO of Twitter, um, obviously that is a big deal because now his attention could be focused back on Tesla. So Tesla had a phenomenal, phenomenal run. If you look at Thursday going into Friday's session. So here was the news, right? We talked about the 7013 pivot. It was huge stock gaps up the next day, goes to 77 and a half. And then there comes a rumor, right? Comes a rumor that now Tesla, uh, Tesla, he's going to step down. So obviously, as you can imagine, the stock starts tanking. So then Elon Musk, somebody uh, tweeted at him and they're like, hey, by the way, uh, are, you know, please tell me you're not stepping down you know, as Tesla CEO. So he responded to them was, well, I, 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 um, I stepped down from Twitter so I can concentrate on Tesla. Usually a PR like that, right? Not a like PR, but at least a statement like that directly from the horse's mouth would have the stock exploding back up, right? Because if the rumor was he's stepping down as going lower, if he, if he refutes the rumor and now the stock should be going high, and it never did so. And if you look at the 60 minute view, right? If you look at the 60 minute view after his, he responded that, hey, I'm not, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm still the CEO and the stock didn't spike back. That's a big, big sign. I want to watch the bottom of the range here, guys. Okay. You know, th this is where the stock broke out. So if the bottom of the range, and you can see it's going, it's going to, it's, right now it's May the 14th. Uh, this bottom range started on May the 9th. So I want to watch this bottom range. So if the stock cannot rally back after everybody has uh, some time to kind of digest the information that, hey, he's not stepping down from Tesla and the stock can't rally, I definitely want to watch this bottom channel because if it starts confirming the bottom channel, guys, look at the 60 minute view. I mean, look at the, look at the view here, right? Look at the view going all the way here, right? Sorry about that, right over here, right? If it starts taking down this bottom channel, okay, uh, this is the low from 5.5. If it starts taking down this bottom channel here, there's a lot of room down. So if, it, if there is no price action that is defended based and refuting this rumor of him stepping down, and if it, do, if it can't rally and starts cracking that bottom channel, I think we, we are set up for a very, very uh, big premium potential. Again, we don't know if it's going to confirm, but as I said a couple of minutes ago, and I've been saying for years and years and years, don't we have to be prepared on both sides of the market? So that's how I'm kind of going into uh, this week. I'm definitely prepared on both sides of the market. I'm watching for anything with aggressive option flow in the direction that I'm watching that's set up uh, deep. The, you know, the, my formula is uh, deep out of the money, short-term expiration uh, with a technical uh, green signal or red signal, depending on if you're, you're looking to short the stock. And I think this is a type of week that if we could finally kind of omit the volatility, right, and just concentrate on the organic flow technically, I think we could go back to resuming really good uh, natural trends. So once again, guys, I want to wish all the moms a very happy and healthy Mother's Day. Hope everybody is living their lives, living their best lives with a smile on their face and the best health 
uh, possible. Guys, God bless. Happy Sunday. And for all you guys who are uh, coming aboard uh, next week, I look forward to working with you. See you in the webinar. Take care.